you, Jim. You've been there, and you know I'm going to smile, and you played in this game. And uh, I think not only was the satisfaction of winning great, but we beat a good football team, and that makes a difference. That's the thing. You beat a darn good football team. A lot of people are know are going to give John Cooper a lot of heat uh, for losing this game, and he hasn't beaten Michigan, but they're a good football team with a lot of talented players. Jim, this is a Michigan replay, and this is for Michigan. But John Cooper's done a great job with Ohio State, and they have had an excellent season. They lose one, and I know a lot of people are going to be on him, but he's done a good job. But I'm very proud of my group, and particularly the seniors, because you played there, and as a senior, they introduce you in that last game, and it's special to you. And you want to play your greatest game, and that's the way our seniors went out. And even though we've had what you indicated was an up-and-down season, our seniors can go out with a lot of pride, and that's important. A victory over Ohio State, kind of the cure-all for all sins and a great way for the seniors at Michigan to end their careers. Don't go away. We'll be back and look at that great effort against the Buckeyes when Michigan replay continues. So, until we got on the playing field. And then. Buster Stanley, one of the really great leaders on this team. You want to talk about a guy that went out on a high note. That senior leader really did against Ohio State. And he's been that way all year. Jimmy's been a great one. I can't tell you. People will not understand, just like I said after that Purdue game, what a great victory, what a great leader Buster Stanley has been for us. Back to the Ohio State game, opening up. Uh, they get the ball first, and it's clear your defense is going to make something happen, and you won't let Joey Galloway, the big-time, big-play receiver, beat you deep. Right. They're going to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and this guy's going to catch two or three bombs, and they think maybe a couple for a touchdown. We took that away, and, and that was really the key. And, Jim, you know and I know you played offense. You were a great All-American offensive tackle. <laughs> Thank right you now. very much. But... When you play great defense, you're going to be in every game. And then Tyrone breaks one off there for 43 yards. He was running very well. Sorry to lose him in this game. One of the great catches you've seen in quite a while. No question. This catch from the sideline reminded me of Anthony Carter. Only Anthony could find a ball in such unusual positions. And, of course, this really fired up our whole Michigan team. And that, of course... Coming, uh, making it 7 nothing on your second possession. Ohio State comes back, turns it over. The secondary played great against Ohio State. No question. And we had good pressure. And you know one thing, the biggest indicator of victory is turnovers. And we won that battle by a big margin. That's why we won by a big margin. Here Tyrone breaks up the middle on a good slant play. Started outside, broke it back. And then on fourth and one, we decided to go for it. I thought we had good plays in here, Jim. I felt comfortable going the game. That's why we went for it on fourth and one. And then the next third and ten, we throw an interception there. Todd could have let Walter Smith, and Walter should have hung on to the ball. We'd had a chance to get inside that marker there. That gives them the turnover, but on the sudden change, your defense won't give up. Right. They roll out here, and uh, they hit Saunders. And this is a very good uh, wide receiver, and they hit him going out for 12 yards. And then a very speedy back, one of the fastest backs in the conference, along with Wheatley, is uh, Butler Benote, and he breaks one off for about nine yards. For the most part, though, you stopped the run, forced him to throw, and this is what happened. Uh, big play there, big play by Ty Law, going up and getting the ball, and then we start on our way to, uh, I believe, ends up on a 95-yard touchdown drive. But well, you get out of the hole with Wheatley making a great run. Big play there. We had a good play there, and Tyrone broke off to the outside. Rachi Mayer, Jim. See, that's the physicalness that he had in this game, and unfortunately, we lost him uh, in the second half. But what can you say about Eddie Davis, who came in and just picked right up? Jim, you know, there's a guy that just try, tries hard, and the one thing about Eddie Davis that you know, he has great ball security. He'll probably pop one up now that I've said that, but... He has great ball security. Here, Todd Collins goes to Derek Alexander, who makes a great diving catch down the one. So you got to understand, we had two big catches by our wide receivers here. And then you go in from the one with freshman John Ritchie taking in, it in, makes it a 14-0 lead at that point. Big plays came on the pass, but it was the running game that closed the game out and set the game up for you. When you get close to 300 yards and rushing, you're going to be all right. Then, right after we went back, we kicked off to them. They threw a ball, and Chuck Winters intercepted. 
giving us the opportunity to go in before halftime 21 to nothing. The last two games against Minnesota Ohio State, that secondary has really stepped up. It's a key, Jim, and that's the secondary we thought we would have all year. But, you know, they came through at the end. And here Todd rolls out, hits Derrick Alexander. He gets inside on a tough. We overcame a penalty on that drive, which was very important. Then Eddie Davis on a draw play breaks up inside for about 12 yards, sets us up to the seven. They have an offsides. We're going on a two count. Then we come out on a kind of a play action pass here, flip it to a wide open. Shea Foster goes in the end zone. 21 to nothing, and it's just before half. You got to feel great. But earlier this season, a couple of occasions, teams have moved the ball on you just before half and regained momentum. Right. And that's a little what looked like was happening on Saturday with the Buckeyes. Right. They had a very good tight end, hoeing to Saunders over the middle for about 16. And you're right, they started coming back until this play right here. And Ty Law makes a great interception there, which really shuts the door on them. And now we have great momentum going in. As you indicated, had they have scored there, we'd been in trouble. But they didn't score there, and the Wolverines came back in the second half and just continued to blitz the Buckeyes. Don't go away. We'll be back to take a look at the second half highlights of that big victory. The Michigan replay continues. We had the goal to come in here to contain the run, you know, and stump from one up the score, and we came in here and shut them out. It was, it was just a great victory. You know, we, can't, we can't say nothing more. <laughs> And the defensive backfield complimented them so well because when you have that much pressure on the quarterback, he's going to throw the ball in somebody else's, the wrong person's hands. And uh, that's what happened today. And, and our offense came in and capitalized on the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes mistakes. And it's just a great victory. Can't get much happier than senior Mark Melia, who did a great job in the middle of that offensive line. And that offensive line, I thought, in the last two weeks, came on big time against the two teams and really got to where they were supposed to be at the beginning of the year. You're right, Jim, and, and we lost so many players there, but you heard from the field general, and by that you understand because you played a position, the little things that people think of offensive line are big, nah, they're, they got to be intelligent kids, quick reacting, and he, he kind of lines them up and tells everybody where to go when everybody's stemming their defense. It's quite proud of him. Coming up, second half highlights, third quarter action. You get the ball first, don't do anything. And Ohio State starts to move it, but you get a great play again by Ty Law. Ty Law had a great day, great day, and we got to expect that from him in the future. And then we get a big break here. And I, I told the kids, you know, the, the potential, they've snapped a couple low ones. Here, as you see, the punter puts his knee down. Gets the ball off. Waller Smith darn near blocks it, but then they put their knee down, and we get the ball in excellent field position. Nice play calling here. You kind of roll a dice, go with some razzle-dazzle, the end around big-time play. Right. We knew we wanted this play, Jim. Bob called it in the first half that Derrick cannot fumble that ball, but we knew they were over-pursuing because they're a good team. They're going to pursue hard. You're going to have a chance to make that play. Eddie Davis again. Draw play, gets down close to the goal line, couldn't get in. But then he does get in on a nice play against the defense that you anticipated. Right, passing down, we, we kind of ran a counter play on there and we cut him off guard and Eddie went in. And, and that's a touchdown that Eddie Davis deserved to have this game. Makes it 28-0 at this point. And really, that was a big score. Took them out of their game plan, which is a running-oriented team. They have to go to the air and hit a pass here right. to hit a pass there to Galloway. You're exactly right. And when you can get running teams to put, be put in a position where you got a chance like Matt Dyson does here, sack their quarterback on a nice play by Matt, and probably a coverage sack because he couldn't get rid of the ball. Those are the things you have to have. So we're sitting in the rocking seat, so to speak, here. But they come back on a fourth. I think it was third and 24. And uh, darn near pick it all up. They made it on fourth and one. And you that gamble get... with a safety blitz and you get home with it. And that's so huge. That oh, play. those are great when they work, you know. And uh, yet we want to preserve a victory now. And now, no matter what anybody says, yes, I'm going to be very conservative. There's still a bit in a holding pattern here. They move the ball, but again, the secondary, Alfie Birch stops.
stops what might have been a touchdown. Yes, and a great play. Come off the back hip of uh, Callaway there. Stuck his arm out, didn't interfere, and, and that was a different. Then Eddie Davis again up the middle on the draw play. This is the beginning of the fourth quarter. You possessed the ball and drive better than eight minutes, and this was the game. No chance for Ohio State to come back after you start making these plays. Right. Uh, there, Todd Collins under a lot of pressure. Flip the ball out to Eddie Davis again. Got us off in uh, good pressure. Then we get down to another short yardage play. Hit Shea Foster in the flat there. That really sealed it up there. That's when I felt comfortable at 28 to nothing. Third and sixth, you complete that. Fourth and five, you go to the tight end. This was just a great time-consuming drive, which is what you needed. No question, exactly. And we wanted to hang on the ball, keep our defense out of there. And here, Ricky Powers makes an excellent run. And he, uh, Ricky came in at the end, and he did a good job running over. And our Norwegian Cruise Line Play of the Week this week. We thought we'd give it to the touchdown catch of Mercury Hayes, but decided, wait a minute, let's go to the defense right before half, Mo. No question. And when you got defensive players playing like this and Ty Law closing him off right before halftime, it makes a huge, huge difference. And Jim, you know, it's easy, I don't know if that's a correct word, but the play offense when you got a defense that's shutting people down. It changes. And I'm so proud, not only of our players, but what our defensive staff right, but it, it really changes how you, an offensive coach, you're handling most of the offense on the sideline, calls plays. Sure. You've got a little more latitude. Sure, at times, if you want to, you can gamble a little bit more. And then at a time when it comes to get conservative, which we did, and hang on to the football. And I thought Todd done an excellent job using the clock today. Uh, that's what it's all about. The other thing is you never lost intensity. When you went in at halftime with a 21-point lead, Ohio State came out, you never lost intensity. This team was emotionally into the game and, as you said three weeks ago, toughened up. Right. And, you know, people looked at me like, what's this guy saying when I said in a Purdue game, one of our great victories, because you felt the enthusiasm and the toughness. And we're proud of who we are. And we wanted to get the respect of everybody in our own respect. And we wanted to hold our heads high, and particularly when we hit people. And they hit people big time against the Buckeyes. And you can honor this great group of young men that made up this 93 Michigan football team by attending the Michigan football bust. It's coming up Tuesday night, November 23rd, at the Weston Hotel in downtown Detroit, Renaissance Ballroom. For ticket information, call area code 313-675-BUST. 675-BUST. You can get in on some really great night, a lot of silent auction items that I know you'd like to get involved with, but check that out. That's Tuesday night coming up to Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Don't go away. Plenty more coming your way on Michigan Replay, including a look back at you guys still helping Michigan even though they're gone. We kept the ball away from them, and uh, you know, that allowed uh, our offense to stay on the field and keep their offense off the field. And, uh, you know, they didn't get any big plays on us, and that's what we have to do.